Hey everybody, this is Cad Roll Hunter, and it's been a while since we've done dimes because it's been a while since I could get dimes, but we have a full box of dimes, so let's get going. Hey everybody, this is James, and you're watching my channel, Cad Roll Hunter. And it has been harder for me to get coins lately, and particularly dimes. When I've gone in and asked for dimes, I haven't been able to get any at all. Sometimes they've been able to give me a few rolls, uh, at most a bundle. So it took me a while to get 50 rolls of dimes. So these are coming from several different banks over the course of the last month and a half, really. And you can see we've got a bunch of different kinds of rolls here, including these ones. But these ones are not ARP rolls. They're uh, Coin Canada, you can see on that. But we can see we've got some older ends that we wouldn't find in an ARP because they're stripping out anything that's made of nickel. So there might be something in there we don't know. But let's dig in and see. We're going to see if we can find any silver. We're on a dime silver streak at the very least. Our last two boxes, we got silver. So you never know what we're going to get here. Um, so this is exciting because we haven't done dimes in a while. We're hoping to keep that streak alive. Of course, we're looking for colorized dimes. We're looking for low mint. We're looking for foreigns. Anything interesting, an error would be really cool. Let's dig in and see what we can get. All right, well, we haven't even opened a roll yet, and I think we're already off to a pretty strong start. I can see a couple of American edges. That's pretty cool. But why I want to show you this is because I can see a reeded edge by my thumb here. This coin looks to be bigger. The diameter is slightly bigger than the other coins in the roll. It's sticking out ever so slightly. The reading is just a little bit different. And so I think we've got a foreign coin in here. So we'll get into this and we'll see what we've got. Okay, I've laid it down. And the first thing I'll just note is that this 1993 Ender looks really, really nice. And I think this one might be worth setting aside. That's a pretty good start. But we're going to have to see if we can find where this thicker coin is. And I see it right here. And absolutely, we've got a foreign 25 cents, 1973, and this is going to be from the Netherlands. I'm going to pull this up on Numista and see if we can figure exactly what's happening. This won't be silver, that's for sure. It's probably nickel or copper nickel, but we'll find out a little bit about it. Okay, there is our 1973 pulled up under the scope, and I've got Numista, a really great resource, and I go down to 1973. And we can see that this is minted at 45 million. So it's not rare by any stretch. And we can see that this is composed of pure nickel, which is pretty cool. Our first find for the board. Okay, I've gone through that roll. Our two Americans were a 1984 Denver and a 2013 out of Philadelphia. Okay, I just dumped out roll number two. And I think we're off to a hot start. And our streak, I think, is going to be alive. Because look at that bright, shiny edge there. I think we've got silver. I'm going to try to lay this down and see if we can find that and it's looking pretty silvery to me and we have a laureate portrait so we've got silver in the box that's awesome this is a 1962 i'm going to just throw that under the scope so we can get a good look at that and there it is confirmed a 1962 80 percent silver canadian dime great great start same roll, we've got a 1968. This is a transitional year. You know that they made dimes in both nickel and in silver. And this one, it's uh, got some odd coloring. It's kind of hard to tell. If I had my magnet, I would do my magnet test. If it was magnetic and stuck to the magnet, we'd know it was nickel. But I can't find my magnet. So luckily, there are different ways that we can determine if this is silver. And one of the ways is to actually drop it on the table and see if it sounds, well, I guess here, if it sounds like silver. And we can compare it to the one that we found earlier. So I'm going to drop it. And that does not have the ring of silver. So we'll listen to this silver dime we know. And you can hear that higher pitched ring. That is how we can tell uh, pretty uh, pretty clearly if what we've got is silver or not. So the 62 is silver. This 68 is just nickel. Roll number three, we've got another U.S. dime. This one's a 1998 out of Denver. Roll number five, and I found another nice 1993. This roll has been mostly older coins, mid-90s and earlier, 80s, 70s. A lot of them in pretty good shape. 
No real keepers until maybe that one. You can see there's another 94 right behind it that looks almost as nice. Got a little hair on it. And, um, you know, it's pretty uncirculated. So I'm not sure what the history is of this particular roll. I've got a 1980 under the scope. And this is the wide zero as it's known. Uh, this is the common variety. I'll put a picture just to the right of what we might be looking for. There's a variety that we wanna find or wanna see if we can find. And we always scope our 1980s just to be sure. Roll number seven. I won't be pulling these out anymore, but we found a double date 2021 Blue Nose Schooner. I still haven't found mintage numbers on these, but they seem to be quite common. So I'll just be pulling aside any 2021 Blue Nose under sale, the color or non-color I find. Those are more limited in terms of mintage. This one, I seem to find lots and lots of them. So I won't bring you back in for these, uh, but hopefully we'll find some color in here. A quick edge check on this uh, plastic roller. This is roll number 11 tells us we're going to find something we can see an American edge and a much thicker edge. It's got some spaced out reading. It looks like it might be a British coin, but we'll find out. It could be a number of things, I suppose, but we'll get in and find out what is in here. So our US coin is a 1999P. And if we look a little further back at our other one, and it is, it is five pence from Great Britain or the United Kingdom. This one from 2014, so that's cool. We got a couple foreigns aside from our American friends. And that's a good find for the board. I don't think I've got this one. Same role, we've got a 2017 commemorative. This is Wings of Peace. And right by the D in Canada, you can see it's a little flatter. I had to check to see if it wasn't a clipped planchet, which is something else I've never found before. But when we look at it, we can see it's been flattened down. So that is just post mint damage or PMD as they say. So this one's not a keeper. We would keep this if we found it in really nice condition because the mintage is a little bit lower and it's a really cool looking coin, of course. Roll 12 is going to give us our sixth U.S. dime of the hunt, a 2013 Philadelphia. Roll 15, we got another 1968 that we're going to check to see if it has the ring of silver. And that's not it. I just poured out roll number 17 and if you can see what I can see behind this 2021 double date, I am seeing some color. So this is our first 2021 color featuring the famous Canadian wooden sailing ship, the schooner Blue Nose. That is fantastic. So we got some color on the board in our dimes. And same roll, just a little further back, we got another one. And just a few coins back, we got the non-color version. This one looks really nice. A lot of our rolls have featured older dimes, and so we haven't had a lot of newer ones to hunt. So I'm glad that we've at least, if we have to endure some newer coins where there might not be a lot interesting, if we can find some of these, that would be really good. Yeah, and now we're finding some for sure. And the very last coin of that roll is a third color. So in this roll, we actually got three colors and four non-colors. Roll number 24. We're going to have a couple of Americans back to back. We've got a 1979. That looks like a Denver. And this one looks a little bit newer. This one is in fact newer. It's a 2002 Philadelphia. Same roll. We got another 1968. When it gets a patina like this, it's a little bit harder to tell visually if this is nickel or silver. This looks like it could be nickel. It looks like it even could be a silver with some tarnish on it. So the easiest way, of course, is to check it with a magnet. I found another magnet, not one I would want to normally use. It's uh, much stronger than my little milk bag opener, but that is definitely uh, attracting the magnet. So that is nickel. So far, roll number 25 is all coins from the 70s and late 60s, as in like 68, 69. And they're, so they're all composed of nickel. If these were nickels, five cent coins, I'd be pulling them out because they're bigger, heavier coins and the nickel content alone is worth like more than two and a half times face value. For dimes, I don't pull out the nickel dimes because the nickel content isn't even worth 10 cents. So this, it's still better for me just to trade it in at face value and get other coins. Having said that, got a couple 1968s and I've checked them and they are both nickel, so they're not silver. 
Uh, and it doesn't look like we've got any silver edges, but when I pulled this out and looked at the edges, I could see often the multiply plated steel coins have a sort of a, a shinier look about them than these ones. Uh, these, these still are silver in color, but they're a little duller. So that told me right away that these were some older dimes, but nothing silver on the edges. So I've pulled up a couple of dimes from this roll, a 1968 on the left and a 1969 on the right. These are both the commonly circulating varieties composed of nickel. The 1969 dime is referred to as the small date, and you can see those sort of smaller, finer characters. And the 1968, they were all minted like this with like block numbering, block letter style numbers. There is a very rare variety in the 1969s, the 1969 large date, where the numbers would look very much like these ones on the left. Very, very rare, not likely that we'll find it, but I am always looking because you never know what is out there. Same roll and we found a pretty nice looking 1978. I think I'll pull that aside and put that in my dime rolls. Still in roll 25 and I've got a 2001 under the scope. We've looked at these before and what we've noticed of course is that it's pretty common to get these uh, small like die cracks around the lettering and so that not uncommon at all for these ones but this one here particularly has a more significant die crack on this uh, by the date from the one right to the rim uh, even right on the uh, Elizabeth II you can see that's pretty interesting I'm going to keep this one because I think this is a little bit more significant than other ones we'll take a peek at the top and we can see some on uh, the D, the A, the N. Yeah, it's pretty significant. Just a design flaw, I think a weakness in the coin, but we'll flip it over. We'll take a peek and see if there's anything on the other side, because we can often see some on the devices near the rim as well. This one, just a, maybe a little bit by, by the hair on that one, but not so bad, a little bit of a stress mark maybe. But this one, has a really cool die crack right from the one to the rim. Pretty neat. I thought I'd just take a closer look at this one to see if there's anything else interesting on here. There are some die clashes you can find on these. Didn't find it here, but I did find a little bit of a die chip above the N in sense, so that's pretty cool too. And very next roll, just for the sake of comparison, here's another 2001 that is very obviously an earlier die stage. This 2001. Uh, has no die crack and even the lettering where we very often see it doesn't have those die cracks. So this might have been uh, minted very early with this particular die where we don't see that same kind of damage. Roll 27, another American. This time it's a 1980 with a P mint mark, meaning it was minted at the Philadelphia Mint. We're in roll number 31 and the coloring of this one caught my eye and when I look at it, it's a 1968, and if we do the, the sound test, you can hear that ring of silver. We have got our second silver of the box, and if I put it up to the magnet, you can see, and I'll try to get it in the frame, it doesn't stick to the magnet. So we have a 1968, pretty rough shape, 50% silver Canadian dime. So that's our second silver dime of the hunt. Incredible. A quick edge check on roll number 32 shows we've definitely got a few Americans and one suspect edge. I thought for a moment it might be silver. I think it's actually just a dirty coin, but we'll take a look. We'll find out for sure. Okay, I've got these laid out. Let's take a peek at what our coin is. And it is a 1968. Eight, so we can check it for silver, but it doesn't look silver. It just had that dirty edge. So we'll do the magnet test here and see that it absolutely isn't. But when the edges look like that, like they could be tarnished and the face looks like that, it's always a good idea to check just to be sure. So nothing else interesting in that rule, but we did get three Americans, a 2006P, 2007P with some grunginess on it and a 2010 Denver. Roll 35 is gonna give us a really nice looking 1973. Look at that nice finish and shine on it. If I flip it over, you'll see very little circulation where really nice condition for a 70s dime. Same roll, another nice keeper, really nice looking 1990. That is a gorgeous coin. 
Roll number 39. We got our oldest American of the hunt. That's a 1966 from Philadelphia. From the edges, I could see that roll number 42 would have a couple of Americans. And I'll just show you this one because I've got it here. And this one is a 1990 from Philadelphia. Roll 45. And we got a really nice looking 1968. I checked it. It is not silver, but that is a beautiful coin. We're in roll 49. We're getting towards the end of this box. We've got another U.S. dime here, and it's going to be a 2018 Philadelphia. No more silver in this, and uh, you never know. We got one more roll, so we still have another chance to get a third silver in this box. We'll take a look. Very last roll, we got a couple of U.S. dimes. Um, look, they look like they're probably pretty new. This one's a 2018p. And this one is very shiny. I wonder if this could be really brand new. A 2021P. I'll have to check and see if I have this in my collection, but this one is really nice. So this might even be an upgrader. We'll have to see. Okay, that is another box. 50 rolls hunted, and we got some good stuff here. So we'll take a look at our finds. We got 26 US dimes. I'll look through them and see if I need any in my collection. That 2021 might be something I need. I'm not sure. We got a couple of foreigns. We got this 25 cents from 1973 from the Netherlands. Looks like it's a little scratched up, but a good addition to my collection. That five pence from the UK from 2014. In our Canadians on the left here, we got that 2001 year of the volunteer. And you can see even from here, those die breaks or cracks from the lettering, but I'm keeping it specifically because the die break from the 2001 the date the one to the rim is something i haven't seen we got six sorry five of the blue nose under sale the double date 1921 to 2021 without the color and we got three of the color and i've set aside some of the nicer ones i'll keep we found a 68 a 73 a 78 a 90 and a really nice 93 and our two best finds so far we're a couple of silver. We got a 1962 80% silver. And I have to correct myself because I think I said this was a 68 50%er. This one here is just the date is somewhat obscured, but it's actually a 1965. If I put it under the scope, we can verify that for sure. It is absolutely a 1965. So that means it is 80% Canadian silver. So those were some great finds, and that means we're on a three-box silver streak in dimes, which is pretty incredible. So we hope to keep that streak alive with our upcoming dime boxes or quarters as well. Anything would be great. I really hope you enjoyed the video of Canadian Dimes. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, Cad Roll Hunter, please do that. I really appreciate it. And I thank you so much for watching the video, as always, and hope to see you again next time.